This week, episode 290, I'm your host, Joe Hozempa. We have the awesome opportunity to interview Stephen Bailey from s and Brands. He's the co-founder and president, if you don't know what that is. It's better known as Cornelius and Anthony Sagaz. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. I can't believe uh, we're going to take some time out at the end of this segment and kind of do a, a quick yearly recap as I'm looking at the calendar. I think this is our last show. I'm not 100% sure of the schedule, but uh, hey, thank you for tuning in right here. Episode 290 of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to episode 290 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa. If you want the bio and show notes of this show, you go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash 290. You will get all the information you need to know about the person we are about to interview. His name is Stephen Bailey. He's a co-founder and president of s and Brands, Cigars, and Cornelius and Anthony. Cornelius and Anthony came here to the Northeast, and uh, I certainly have my favorites, and we're going to talk about them. Um, welcome to the show. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Joe. Uh, appreciate the opportunity, and uh, it's a privilege to be back on the show again. Yeah, absolutely. I was doing uh, a little bit of uh, research before the show, and my producers tell us that you were on the show at episode 225. So if you are new to Story Geeks or want to catch up on Cornelius and Anthony when they made their debut here on the Story Geek Show, you just go to our YouTube page or website, type in episode 225, and away you go. Um, at least, um, Stephen, you and I are the same when we say, I think I was on this show. It was a blur. Uh, I know I was here. <laughs> uh, we know you were here because the producers said both of you were here. Um, you, you know what that means? Uh, I, you know, I just want to take a couple of you, you, you know what that means? When you don't have some of those details and stuff like that, it truly is a testament to that you love what you do and you do what you do in the moment. And do it every every day. And unfortunately, <laughs> I, and unfortunately, I'm not a drinker, so I, I can't even blame it on drinking. You know, so. oh, it's <laughs> I can't believe that uh, here we are, December fourteenth of twenty eighteen. And um, this might be our last episode. We might do an end of year uh, a review. Um, you would have to go to st uh, stogiegeeks.com. Stay tuned to our social media to get the update on that um, there. Um, January 2nd of 2019 will be the second year that I've been affiliated with st uh, Stogie Geeks. And I'm just like, wow, like two years. Like that's, it just flew by, you know? It, 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 it so flew by. Um, it's just crazy, you know? We, we, we've- uh, Joe, it, Joe, they're paying, <laughs> they're paying well. That's what it is. It, You're it, getting paid so well, it's, it's just flying by. It, it is, it is, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know? It's a crazy time. I can tell you, the Stogie, the Stogie Geeks listener, um, that next year, we have some some awesome things lined up in Q1 where we're going to get a little bit more uh, in depth with uh, some of the some of the uh, in the people that we interview and uh, also get more in depth with uh, some some of the sponsors on the show and really get inside of their company. And um, yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to be on the road. Uh, doing that, it's gonna be awesome. Um, we'll, I'm looking forward to 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 that. So, um, so we we got super cool things happening in 2019. Um, 2018 was a blur, 
You know, 2018 was a blur for me personally too. I I my first born well well my first born child is my son, right? He was born on sub- September 7th and you know, obviously we, we go through all of that. So like 2018 has been like all baby. What are we going to do? You know, not what are we going to do bad, but like, you know, where are we going now? Oh, we need a bigger house. Oh, we need this. We need that, you know? It's 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 just been a crazy blur. And and the fact that um next week when when, when we go and celebrate holiday uh, I, I, this is going to be the first kind of, it's going to be the first Christmas. I'm going to be like, whew, whew, what a year, you know what I mean? And then, you know, uh, in a good way, you know, and then, and, and this is also the first new year for me where I'm really looking forward to like, to like what next year really, really brings, you know what I mean? And, you know, like, like this is the time of year, you know, the, the quick books for the business is a mess. Things are things are you know I I gotta reconcile all of that I gotta get things done. Um, haven't even started Christmas shopping. I did start on Black Friday online and then Cyber Monday, but I'll be totally honest with you. I bought like all stuff for myself. <laughs> like I mean, it, it got it got really bad. Like I bought myself I bought myself like like I said this on the Story Geek Show. I bought myself like a super cool cigar kind of thing and it holds all my stuff uh you know i got i got i got so much stuff so um yeah i bought boxes of cigars all stuff and 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 i'm like this is why i can't start early because i'm like oh i like that oh it can be delivered in two days i'm on it you know what i mean (laughs) Uh, i'm guilty as well i'm not finished either i like i wanted to get finished early this year but uh it's just too much been going on for me and Joe, is this the first year that you you're with uh, with a child for, for first time? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh-huh. both me and Mama first time parents. Fantastic! <laughs> I can well, do congratulations. a congratulations. I can do a whole podcast on those past fourteen weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's wait, like wait, wait till they start driving. That's when you're going to turn into a parent. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it's 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 like you know, and then you know, in in uh, I'm obviously Italian, so. Every one of my family is a doctor. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you know, every, you know, and, and, and especially like with, with Thanksgiving, you know, everybody was over and both sides of the family were over and they like evaluate the kid and they're like, you know, <laughs> and it's just like, dude, really? And like, oh, he's so cute. Really? You think he's cute? Well, I'll tell you what, about 4.08 in the morning, come on over to the house. I'll leave the front door open. We can all get together again and see how cute he is at 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, oh, it's crazy. It's just, it's just, it's just been a blast. I, I can't even describe like, like just how I'm feeling and, 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 you know, the, everything that transpired over this calendar year, uh, not only here on the story, the story geek show, but like, you know, here, uh, in, in my personal life and my business life. And it's just, it's, it's just a great time. You know, it's a great time. It's it just, it's, it just changes you. You know, yeah, just, I, yeah, you don't really I, I didn't really grow up until I had my first child. I mean, that's just the fact. And, you know, I got married and I was, you know, OK, I'm married. Whoop de do. I can always, <laughs> I, you know, I can always get another woman. Right. But then the kid comes along and you're kind of hosed because that's your kid forever. Yeah, sure. And it's a reflection of you. And, and you know, it's a it's a big moment. And it really it, hang on to it because it doesn't last long. You know, 18, 20 years sounds like a long time. But, you know, I can still remember my first one born and and I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, I'm responsible for another human being. And that means I've got to tighten my act up. And yeah, yeah I've been. I've been pretty busy ever since. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's just it's just crazy. You know, it, it, it just uh, just awesome. I, I remember the first Story Geeks episode I did um, post baby. Right. I came back and it's like it's like I couldn't even concentrate. You know what I mean? Like it was just like it was just like, yeah. And, and, and the person was in studio. Right. It was Tom from the uh, Line of Duty Cigars, right? He came mm-hmm. in. He came in with Greg from from Vintage. It was a great interview and 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 stuff like that. But it was like one of those things where you know I'm like, whew, like wow, like you know I got like all these things going on and 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 yeah. And that and that first kind of six six weeks uh, of when you have a new baby, I mean, pff, they, you just like. It's just your your house is just organized chaos. You know, people coming in and out. 
trying to do that. You're trying to get the baby on a schedule, and everybody wants to visit the baby. It's, it's just crazy, you know? Oh, yeah, it was the same way for me. You know, you, you've got the mothers-in-law showing up, and, you know, of course, they're all full of advice and <laughs> more than more than willing to tell you what you're doing wrong yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. So, I, so, I, I'm, so I'm happy those days are behind me. Trust me, dude, it gets better after diapers. It really does. Cool. So before we <laughs> uh, transition into cigar talk, um, I know that my son has a doctor's appointment, regular checkup in February, but he's going to have a doctor's appointment Christmas Eve and Christmas Day when, when he visits the family. You know what I mean? They'll be like, you know, is he okay? Is he eating all right? He's eating. He's gaining weight. It's fine. He's going to the bathroom. We're all good here. Like, everything's, everything's perfect. You know what I mean? You know, the, and, and the, off, the offspring evaluation, I, I can relate to that. And it's just like, oh, and, and, you know, he sleeps on his stomach. What do you mean he sleeps on his stomach? No, 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 no. He, he I'm sorry. He sleeps on his back. Like, like uh, that, I'm like, yeah, dog, you swallow me, put him on my back. Well, you slept on your stomach. I was like, well, I don't know what to tell you. Doctors said put, <laughs> swallow him and put him on his back. And, and he's at a point now where he's going to start rolling over. You know, mm-hmm. you, you know what I mean? And then yeah. so uh, that swaddle technique. To put him to bed, mm-hmm. supposedly mm-hmm. goes out the window now. You're not supposed to swaddle him after after they roll over because of safety. And I'm like, oh man, what are we gonna do? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, what am I gonna do? Like, like, can I put like a little duct tape to make the blanket a little snug? Like, is that you know? Uh, <laughs> kidding, <laughs> kidding. We don't yeah. need we don't need anybody sending this DCYF. <laughs> Next thing you know, Saturday morning. You know, Saturday morning, DCYF saying, uh, we, need, we need to check your house for, for duct tape. It's under the kitchen <laughs> sink, right? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, thank you for uh, just allowing me to just have my dad moment. I appreciate it, you know? <laughs> oh, I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I, I appreciate it. Some of the Story Geeks listeners are going to say, wow, he was more scatterbrained pre-baby, let alone <laughs> let alone post-baby. That explains a whole hell of a lot. Yes, yes, I'm not taking any crazy drugs or anything like that. I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just a happy father. Like, I can't, like, I can't, you know. Uh, I put boxing gloves on him. I'm, 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 uh, I'm a boxing fan. I still box. And I put, awesome. uh, uh, he got, um... Uh, a gift that have uh, boxing gloves and they have our last name on it, so his last name on it and whatnot. And and like you know, I have him lie down and have the boxing gloves already and going like that. A couple more weeks, mom goes back to work. That that f- flew by, seventeen weeks off like that. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's just it's just uh, he's going to the to the gym. He's gonna sit in his little boppy and uh, you know hang out with the other babies that. That visit the frequent the boxing gym, you know, it's awesome. It's just that, so that's cool. A, that's a that's a great place to raise a child. Uh, I mean, obviously in the gym, and he's going to pick up some stuff there. He, Maybe a good right hook or something. Either that, but see, what I like about boxing gym is, or the MMA gym, there's no real fights in there. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like nobody picks on anybody. Nobody talks crap. It's perfect. And, and, and I'm gonna take them everywhere except for the cigar shop, and then we'll we'll have to we'll have to figure, we'll have <laughs> to figure out some, some something like that. But the owner of another cigar shop uh, here in Rhode Island has a son, and um, he's like, oh, you know, you know, uh, as soon as Bethany goes back to work, you know. We can hang out, and you know we have to do non cigar stuff. So I'm kind of looking forward to that because I can hang out like with my cigar friends, but not at the cigar shop. And it's gonna be cool because we're all gonna do like a baby club or something like that. It's gonna be awesome. You know That's I mean? awesome. That's good you know? times. Now what what we need to find is a cigar cl- uh, club member whose kids like 16, 17, and can watch all our kids. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then she can make money and then we'll go to the cigar shop. But, you know. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah. Then when mom watches the show a couple weeks later, I'll be getting a wrist slap. You're not having any money babysitter, right? <laughs> You're going to get in trouble one way or the other. I, I get in trouble every day. Every day I find a way to, I find a way to get in trouble. Uh, if it's not at home, it's certainly here at work. Um, that's for sure. I, <laughs> I always get in trouble, but anyway, um, t- take us through how your family has been in the tobacco industry. Um, you're third generation, correct? I'm actually fifth generation oh, okay. and my son, my son is sixth generation. And, you know, people say, well, how, how does that work? I, my answer is we're too stupid to quit. You know, this is just, we you don't have <laughs> We really don't have anything else. We have enough intelligence to do other than work tobacco all the time. Well, um, it, it's not a bad gig. 
It's all I know. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you know, it's not a bad gig. And, and take us through through some of that some of that transition, kind of like you know what it was like, you know, when you were a kid and growing up, and and, sure. and uh, is was this naturally something that that you always wanted to do? Because personally, me, like my father was a chief in the navy, and my mom um, is a property management director for the airport corporation here in Rhode Island. So, you know, and, and, you know, growing up as a kid, my father was like, you're not joining any military. You are going to go to college and do what you got to do. And so, you know, um, I, I never really followed the footsteps of my parents. You know what I mean? And, and what I've noticed that is some of the other interviewees that we get, there kind of is a mixed bag. There are some that are first generation, especially when it comes to the newer cigar companies where they're first generation and, um, you know, they, they, they got into it themselves. Others uh, have the opportunity to be grandfathered in, so to speak, you know. Um, so take us through, through your journey. Sure, sure, Joe. Thanks. Uh, you know, for, for me, I grew up on the tobacco farm. Um, I live uh, or grew up right where multiple generations of my family has grown up and, and grown tobacco. Uh, within, within two miles of where I'm at right here, um, my great-great-grandfather, at least, maybe before him, but, you know, we haven't been able to really uh, pinpoint that. But we know my great-great-grandfather was here and he was growing tobacco. Uh, my grandfather continued to grow. My great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father. Um, I worked in the tobacco field all my life. I can, my first memories was growing up at the end of a tobacco row, waiting for my mom to come back from the other end. Um, so my, my mom and dad, um, th they were in the farming industry and, and really, uh, as far back as I can tell, um, you know, that that's kind of the way it's been really not only on my grandfather's side, but as well as my grandmother's side. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it's just, you know, it's just in my blood. It's all I've ever known how to do. It's the only thing I, and to say that I wanted to do this, well, you know, I don't know how many folks at the age of 20 years old really knows what they want to do in life. Sure. I, I can, you know, I, I can relate to your child stories because for me, um, you know, growing up in, in a tobacco field and growing up on a farm and, and my dad is, my dad was really, and has always been, uh, you know, very motivated to grow, you know, one way or the other. So his business started on the farm, but it migrated to uh, a tobacco auction warehouse. And I, when I was 12, I started helping him there. And so between the ages of eight and 12, uh, I worked on the farm full time. Uh, there was no, in the summertime when all the other kids were having fun, Stephen was kind of stuck in the tobacco field. I, I can remember what a sorry father, you know, he's got me out here in the tobacco <laughs> field with these Mexicans and, you know, what kind of mess is this? And all my friends are either playing baseball, football, or, or going to the swimming pool during, during the summertime. But I, you know, I had to work. So, um, you know, and I did that up until, uh, I turned 22, I believe when I got married and, you know, from there, two years later, uh, still working on the farm, still working in my father's tobacco warehouse. We were also and still are uh, in the tobacco brokerage business, which is basically buying and reselling different varieties and types and stock positions of tobacco. And we sell it all around the world. So that that is a business that we've been in since probably 1980. Mm. But in 94. In 94, um, when I was 24 years old and we were coming back from Pennsylvania because we, we've been present up there buying and buying tobacco from the farm community since mm, 1980. So we were coming back from Pennsylvania and dad says, well, you know, I, I know you're, you're at a point now where, cause I told him, you know, I'm, I, I don't really have any desire to spend another year in the tobacco field or in the warehouse or doing this, you know, I need to do something cause I'm married now. And yeah, he came to the he came to the conclusion it was time to get into the tobacco products business. So, in '94 we started uh, making cigarettes here in Southside Virginia, and we're still doing that today. Um, that's kind of where everything started from the tobacco product side. But in 2012, 
Um, you know, with FDA involvement, I realized that if I ever had a, a burning desire to get into the premium cigar industry, I'd better do it now because the government's not going to give us an opportunity to do it later on. So that was kind of my, I jumped into it. Uh, I spent a couple of years making a lot of dumb, ignorant mistakes simply because I didn't know any better. Um, and I figured out uh, pretty early on that I wasn't, uh, I didn't have the experience and knowledge base that I needed to do this. So I, I was, I was out searching for someone that could, you know, that I could hire that could come in and give me some direction. And that's when I found Courtney. Now, fortunately, uh, I found Courtney Smith. I, I don't remember the exact year, but I want to say it's 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, and the 2015 time frame, I was working with a manufacturer. We were introducing uh, really our first product into the premium cigar market. And uh, this was the, I believe it was the New Orleans IPCPR show. I think that's 2015. Mm-hmm. Anyway, cigars show up and as we had you know, been working with the manufacturer for several months leading up to the show getting prepared for it and getting samples and all the samples came in for the show. We dig into the samples and it was a complete and total disaster. The cigars were crap. They weren't nothing what we had anticipated or what we had expected uh, when we gave the guy a lot of money to make cigars for us. So that whole show was, um, you know, like I said, a disaster. I brought all those cigars back here to our facility and I burn them up. That's how bad they were. You didn't even smoke because them? I, I did no way. I said, you know, I can't, I can't ruin my company's reputation out the gate. There's just, you know, we, we can't. We can't put something out to the public that's unacceptable. So Mm -hmm. I I burn them up and, you know, Courtney kind of took the reins at that point. And she said, well, I know two folks that we need to visit with, one of which was uh, Sandy Cobras down at uh, uh, El Titan de Bronze in Miami. Uh, We went to see Sandy and she started making product for us soon thereafter. And I also got on a plane and flew down to Nicaragua and spent some time with Eric Espinosa and Hector down there. And, Mm. Both of, both of those guys, um, you know, have been a big help to us and giving us direction and helping us blending and, you know, a lot of different aspects of the industry. Um, but they've been a big part of, of our success. So those two manufacturers is really what, what got us going in the right direction along with, you know, with Courtney and, and uh, her overseeing, making sure I'm not doing anything stupid because that happens on occasion. Um and you know it's it's been it's been a lot of fun ever since. Mm-hmm. You brought up a lot of great points that I was trying not to interrupt you. Right, <laughs> you know, um, we're gonna go, I guess, in chronological order. Uh, when you had pivoted to the conclusion on the FDA, uh, I'm assuming that, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that you've had experience from the S and M brand side. Uh, with FDA regulation when it comes to the cigarette tobacco. That's true. Right? I mean, I, so, I'm not, yeah, my company is one of only two, mm-hmm. uh, even to this day, that has a marketing order from the FDA uh, for cigarettes. And it was because of the work that we did, uh, you know, providing all the data, all the information, literally uh, cases and cases and cases and filing cabinets full of documents, um, to, to provide them with the data that they needed to give us that marketing order. And, um, you know, I think one other company has pulled that off to date. So um, getting into the cigar side, I, I recognized that I was going to have to work with a manufacturer that had been around a long time, that had made a lot of cigars and different blends because y- you really got to, you got to pull from blends that were made in 2007 and before. So that's really where the connection with El Titan de Bronze became so critically important because they've been in business for a long time and we've been able to partner with them and, you know, have access to blends that uh, companies my size that are just getting in the cigar business are not going to have access to. So, you know, we're very fortunate that we were working with them and that solved our FDA problem for cigars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. uh, You know, it's. That's an ongoing argument that I've been having probably since 2014, 2015 myself, either here on this show or on other shows. And, and I mean, it's like, you know, what, what, what do you do, right? Obviously, uh, whatever they say is going to be the go-to, 
right? Um, the they, gospel, you know, and then whatever they say is is going to be the 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 pivot point for small companies or large companies, all companies, right? With that regulation, I mean, you know, uh, alcohol, tobacco, and firearm firearms highly regulated, sure. Um, there, all all the different rules apply per state, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Even even for shops that I know that that want to get into that online game, you know, can't ship tobacco to specific states. Um, you know, it it it, it becomes it becomes a uh, challenge. So basically, from from my takeaway from what you're saying is that hey, you know, uh, we 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 experienced this before in in another industry that my family has been here. And in regards to the premium cigars, um, you, you just kind of got to wait and, and see what they're going to do and, and exactly what the uh, consequences are going to uh, be. And, you know, um, I, I, I watch numerous, I've heard numerous, um, we have the opportunity to, to interview a ton of people, obviously, right, within the industry. And um, most of them still say that I specifically don't look at it um, the right way because my whole take on the FDA is this, right? They've thrown out that $250,000, uh, $275,000 um, post-predicate date uh, challenge or uh, fee that they have to have so that their tobacco can go through the process of being regulated, right? Um, yes. lot of, uh, and, and, and a lot of people both in and out of the industry or cigar enthusiasts that I meet either uh, at different shops from Stogie Geeks or shop owners and, 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 and they're like, well, wh you know, where do you think that that number comes from? And like, I honestly feel that that number comes from the original batch of what it takes to, quote unquote, come into market for premium tobacco. Uh, uh, pre, uh, premium cigar tobacco. And what I mean by this, uh, hold on, I can do my disclaimer. The views expressed in the show do not respect Story Geeks' management in there. This is Joe Hosepa's disclaimer, right? <laughs> so, all right, it's done, right? I take care of that, right? So, you know, yeah. um, so, so, so they, 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 they do, so they, they, that's the number, right? You release a cigar, you try to get to 250,000 sticks. You go and get yourself some distribution, either be it broker or inside rep. You go through your first round, then you get close, then you order a second round. It's another two fifty. Uh, regardless of if that fee is going to be applicable or not, any industry they're going to pass it on to the consumer. Yes. Right. So yes. I, I mean, I mean, any industry. This is not a. This is not a a, a cigar. Uh, you know, I'm picking. You know, so realistically speaking, um. It's been proven in the cigarette industry, in the alcohol industry, in the firearms industry, in the canned corn industry, that if your corn is 40 cents higher and you go, you're not going to boycott. You're going to use it for your family. And it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same thing with tobacco. If you truly enjoy cigars as we do, we're already spending 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 20, 80 hundred dollars a stick anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 what the hell's a buck? Like in, it's in, true. Like like seriously. Like and 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 then when I speak to 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 countless people in out of studio via Skype via Zoom, however they come here on Story Geeks, and I'm like, it's gonna be passed on to the consumer. and We're gonna move on because we're gonna have no other choice to move on. Now yeah. now generating that initial capital is could be difficult for some people before they eventually float it to pass it on to the consumer, but. What's going to happen? Well, basic economics would tell you that, and again, this is not a cigar industry. This is just an economics 100 level discussion. Basic economics will tell you that the cost will go on to the consumer and the barrier to entry to get into the game was here and now it's going to be here. And so, okay, downside for the consumer, there's less boutique sticks. There's less new, new creativity. But the bottom line is, we're still going to be able to have premium cigars, and if we do, they're going to be a buck extra. Like, what is the deal? Well, Am I off my rocker? <laughs> no, no, you're not. I mean, you're you're not off your rocker. I think your numbers are low, though. I mean, when you get into when you get into creating brands, mm -hmm. you're you're hiring people. Um, you're paying them a lot of money to help you design those brands. Then you're talking to the 
the uh, cigar band manufacturer, and you know he's going to cost me right much money. And then I've got to go talk to the box guy, and you know I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to beat the box guy. Then there's a significant capital investment involved with getting into the cigar industry even before the FDA was concerned. If if you're trying to be in the business long term, and that's that's the way we've always viewed anything that we've been involved with. We we look at it from a long term basis. Sorry, that's that's Senior Sugar's barking. If you can hear that nice. dog, in the, yeah. Does the dog um, look like the dog on the box? Come here, Oscar. No, nice. show you. Come here. Come here, <laughs> Oscar. Come here. <laughs> he's, he's barking at somebody. Come here, Oscar. Oscar, come here. I'll get him at some point. There you I'll go. figure out. No problem, but I'll show him to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but th- there's a mag- there is a, a significant amount of money involved with starting any business. But when you get into the tobacco side of things, and you're talking about the box guy, the manufacturer, you've got to you've got to procure the tobacco, for in, you know, to to make the cigars. Then you've got to the advertising. Okay, mm. go buy go buy an ad uh, in Cigar Aficionado, and let me know how much pain was involved with that. So yeah. <laughs> That really well, is a lot of. Hey. There's a lot of money involved with starting a, a cigar brand. I'm glad you brought it up. Buy an ad on Stogie Geeks, and and, and we'll take away the pain. There you go. That's exactly <laughs> right. And not only that, you you can make it interactive, and it can change. It can change. Uh, it can it, it it can pivot. You can do different directions. You can do a 30 second clip. You can do a 60 second clip. Be before and after the show. You can tell us your story week after week after week. You can do a coupon code and click it to your site. You can't click on Scott Fishinato Magazine. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm just we'll, saying. We, and, we'll, we'll we'll have to figure all that out after the show, Joe. But yeah, I mean, I just generally <laughs> you speaking, mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and just generally speaking, it's very expensive to get into the business. And once you get into the business, you've got to have a product that is good enough to survive. You've got to have the infrastructure in place to support the product. You've got to have good relationships with the manufacturers. Um, you know, you've got you you got a lot of people. I have a lot of people that are on the ground right now selling cigars, and those people have got to get paid. So, you know, once you start tallying up the dollars involved with starting an indus- starting in this industry, if you're going to survive, now mm-hmm. I'm, there are lots of guys out there that are going to buy, you know, a certain number of boxes and get them in the United States, and let's see what happens. Well. You know, good luck. I, I mean, that's kind of how I started in the industry, but that was back before the government was batshit crazy. So, you know, we w- to survive in this industry, you've got to have a lot of money. You've got to have a tremendous amount of determination and a burning desire to succeed because, trust me, over the last 25 years, I've had plenty of days that I could have happily walked out of this building and never came back mm-hmm. because it's tough. You're fighting lawyers. You're fighting Governments, you're fighting public perception of your products, you're fighting employees, you're fighting vendors. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Sure. Um, and it's not an easy thing to do. You just have to kind of, you just have to kind of believe in what you're doing and, and not worry about failing, uh, you know, and that's just kind of the way it has to go yeah. to succeed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, another part of, of your discussion, you had talked about when you first released the cigar. Um, w- uh, over at the New Orleans show, where are you now currently with Cornelius and Anthony uh, as far as distribution? Um, you know, uh, take us through some of the uh, br- uh, brands and blends that you want to highlight. Yeah, I mean, we we have uh, we have we have introduced products every year since that show. The the next year in Vegas, we introduced the Cornelius line. Um, the following year, we introduced Meridian. No, excuse me. Introduced Daddy Mac. Yep. And Ven- and Venganza. Yep. Uh, the following year, we introduced uh, Meridian, and we've also introduced the Gent, which was this past year, uh, as well as um, Mistress. And I'm trying to think. Did I leave one out? I don't think so. I Ariel. Think I got them all. Ariel. 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 Ariel, that's right. I'm smoking one right now. I thank forget? God for Courtney, right? She's keeping us. <laughs> right, well, right. I'm sorry. Goes, but thank God for Courtney. She's keeping us on track, right? Those, are, those <laughs> aren't notes. They're instructions, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> thank you, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, we, we've tried to introduce, and we will continue to do so, at least one product every year, because I think that's a big part of 
uh, what keeps consumers coming back? I mean, c- consumers that are out here, particularly newer consumers of cigars, they're looking for something a little different. They're not hung up on the, the brands of the past. They want something. They want a variety of different cigars that are in their wheelhouse. Uh, and it's up to me and my company to provide that to them so that they can maximize their cigar smoking experience. I mean, there's only so much time. Most of us don't have the luxury of being able to smoke at work. I do. And yep. obviously you do. Yes. But a lot, a lot of these folks, you know, they've got some time at some point in their day that is extremely valuable to them where they're going to sit down and enjoy a cigar. And I've got to make sure that I don't screw that experience up. It's mm-hmm. my job to provide a product that they're going to be uh, 100% satisfied with. And, you know, we're, to my knowledge, now I don't like to say we're the only, because I, I don't know what everybody's doing, but to my knowledge, we're the only company that fully 100% guarantees every single stick, every cigar that comes out of here. Uh, if you're not happy with it, if you're not satisfied with it, we will give you your money back. And the reason why is because it's got my name on the packaging. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, can you imagine Joe's cigars and some dude in California says, Joe, your cigars suck. And what are you going to do about it? <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you can either say, well, tough luck, dude, you know, or you can say, hey, man, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Here's your money back. And look, it, give me another opportunity. I think that builds a lot of loyalty over time because, you know, for us, it's 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 a paramount necessity to provide a super high quality product for that few minutes of time that people have to enjoy. I don't want to be responsible for screwing that time up. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a very, that's a a very, very accurate statement where, you know, I have the opportunity to have a cigar at work. Sure. But after work, if I get together with, with some friends or, or some colleagues or something like that, um, they haven't had that, that luxury all day. And, they very much look look forward to it, you know, f- uh, for yes. sure. You know what? It, it, it's it's competitive out there, right? I mean, it, it's ultra competitive out there. What's your sort of take to some of your early on su- success that 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 you've experienced with that? Because you know, um, at least here in the Northeast. Um, in here in Rhode Island and Massachusetts and, and kind of new, the, 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 the New Hampshire area, I kind of, especially here in Rhode Island, um, uh, uh, when the cigar enthusiast or cigar customer of the particular retail shop comes into the doors, uh, Cornelius and Anthony certainly has been in the round robin of discussions here um, throughout 2018 for sure. You know, a lot of people like from 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 the you know if you could say word, uh, word on the street, a lot of people really like the Daddy Mac. I'm a fan of the Senor Asugas for sure. Uh, that so far that that one's got my my bell rung. Where I'm like, wow, it's so unique. But what, what before we get into the to to the actual blends, what kind of uh, Take us through like your kind of mantra when it comes to say market penetration or 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 pro, uh, product validation, um, and then how you think that you're positioned within the marketplace now, and what do you think uh, for the uh, the years to come? Well, Joe, that that's a great question. I mean, the the key the key to surviving or succeeding in any business or industry or the people it's all about the people and of course you've got to have a good product and you've got to you know you've got to have a a lot of infrastructure to support those people in the field but you know as you know you didn't really know Cornelius and Anthony until I hired Joe up there so you know Joe Joe was a critical component to our success in the northeast and I I can rattle off names of people down the east coast and the Midwest and Texas and, you know, out in California where I, I have the people and and those people, whether they're, I have some direct employees that are sales reps that work for me strictly for cigars. I've also dealing with, you know, a several brokers that, you know, we've interviewed over time. We felt comfortable with them. They, you know, we, we felt like they could actually help us get product into the big brick and mortar location. So it's all about the people and, and the relationships 
that they already have. Because I, if I showed up at the store next door to you today with a box of cigars telling somebody I wanted to sell them, they're going to laugh me out the door. They don't know me from Adam. Sure. Uh, they would just as soon uh, just as soon me get away from there thinking I was an FDA plant or something, you know? So it's important for us to, to build off ex- existing relationships, either through direct employees uh, or the or the broker network that we employ now. So that that is absolutely a big component. Now, as far as our distribution is concerned, you know, our cigars are available throughout the entire country. Uh, there are places we're not in, um, and you know we're trying to get in them. You know we're asking for the business. A lot of times there are uh, agreements with other competitors that keeps me out of there. Uh, a lot of times it's because there's a lack of awareness of the product. So anytime that any of your listeners or you walk into a shop that doesn't carry my product, ask for it because most retailers are not going to invest their money in an unknown. Mm. It's it's too expensive to carry the inventory. So they're going to only carry things that they know they can sell. And if they got consumers walking in the door asking for it, that's a pretty good clue that they can sell it. So, um, you know, we're working hard to get product available in every brick and mortar location in the United States. We're, we've also got our products available in the catalogs, which personally, uh, I don't I don't love the catalog situation mm. uh, b- because I know what's involved with opening a small business. It's it's a lot of investment. There's a lot of time and sweat equity and, you know, employees. And there's just a lot involved with it. And I want to see those guys succeed. And and but unfortunately, uh, in order for me to grow my business, in order for my product to have good distribution to to, you know, a vast majority of the cigar consumers, I have to. You know, I have to do business with the catalog company. So for the most part, you can find my cigars at brick and mortar. And if you cannot, uh, ask for them and you know, go online if you have to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with in regards to the catalogs, I mean, you know, it's not a bad thing. I mean, cigar, some, some, some c- cigar smokers get together with their friends and they split a box. They buy it online or they buy it from a catalog. And whatnot, and they get together. the 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 mission is still accomplished, right? You, it, group, it, it's sort group, of group. accomplished. Yeah. Here's the difference: the difference is that venue that that brick and mortar controls is where I get all my feedback from. Sure, that's where I'm talking to the consumer, and the consumer is telling me, "Hey, I love your stuff," or "I hate your stuff," or you know, I'm getting that that feedback that's so critical for me to respond to, and that that really goes to you know, what we're doing all the time here and, and every year as we're introducing a new product, we're not just, you know, flipping a coin saying we're going to pick a brand and pick a blend and let's go see what happens. What we're doing is we're taking that consumer feedback and we're utilizing that as a guide for us to create the next blend, if you will, and create the next brand and the next set of artwork that is going to add to our portfolio. I, you know, I've got a, I've got several different uh, lines now, they, they've they all been put into place for a reason. Most of the time, it's because of consumer feedback of, hey, I need a, I want a, a Connecticut or I want a Maduro or I like this size and I, I like the uh, products with this type of wrapper on. That's the kind of feedback that we utilize to really make our decisions as far as new product introductions are concerned. So mm. that's why I have to have brick and mortar. I don't get that kind of feedback, um, you know, from a catalog company unless I, you know, happen to see somebody write a review uh, under my products on one of the websites. That's that's not enough information to really make decisions by. Mm-hmm. Has social media been a big part of your outreach, or it, are you still kind of tied to some of the conventional methods of, you know, an example, putting in Cigar Aficionado or another magazine or another type of like what what what's what's your take on on some of that stuff in regards to social media uh and its impact in launching a brand social media is critical for us um you know we we want to talk to that consumer um that's willing to talk back you know there's a lot of guys old guys that are smoking their brand from 25 30 years ago that (laughs) walk you know they walk in they buy their box they go home they come back and you know however much time and they don't really venture into trying new things. The folks on social media are willing to try new things. Mm-hmm. They they want variety. They want 
the new thing that's coming out. And, you know, communicating with those people is something that uh, that we spend a lot of time. We have a person devoted to that daily. Um, she does such a wonderful job. She's up in the Northeast, um, and we're just tickled to death to have her. But th- we couldn't survive without social media because it's such a fantastic communication platform to give and receive information from consumers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I also think it, it, it allows them – to get kind of a, a easier access to a more in-depth look of the of the company and and kind of get some more knowledge because uh, you know the the seekers of the, what's the newest cigar out there, um, the consumer behavior is a lot of like craft beer industry right mm-hmm. where Very much so. where, where the craft beer industry you know we we you know um, I've done some some home brewing myself um, I'm craft beer junkie for sure um what i find fascinating with the business models is like okay well you know we you know they they go out and when they produce whatever it is that they produce its production is lower than the demand so again basic economics will tell you that um when there's a line out the door for some new release or some weekend release or however they market and position it, uh, it, it builds the demand and and it's 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 quite fascinating. But what what I notice is that the that type of consumer, not only the craft beer, but how that trickles into the cigar industry, is that their palate wants more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so so my palate wants that creativity of the new brand that's going to come out in 2018, 2019, come on the show. So, you know, I, I truly get giddy when, uh, you know, email comes through and it's like, uh, can we have your address? Cause we have a cigar and I'm like, who are these people? Like who, mm-hmm. like uh, never heard of these people, you know, and they want to, you know, they want to come on the show and talk a little bit about the show and stuff like that it happens all the time. And, it's like, oh yeah, well we've been around for, and some of them have been around for for eight years. Ten, it's like, wh- where have you been? Oh well, right. we never really made it to the Northeast, or <laughs> oh, we really never. And, and and then even when I travel and I go to different cigar shops, like I literally take time in the humidor to look around of stuff I have never had the opportunity to have. And and again, because the demand is there, but in the cigar field kind of like the craft beer industry where the craft beer industry it's demand with the cigar industry what i find out in my experience it's the distribution right so yeah okay Absolutely. sure the, the, every state should have uh people uh cigar smokers who want to try something new it's how do you the owner get that distributed out in a timely fashion and oh by the way through the murky water of everyone else who's kind of pushing at the door. You know what I mean? It's like a fire. It's like a fire. Uh, it's like, a, you know, if there was a fire in the building, I was trying to rush to the door is that kind of bottleneck there. And, and, and then through that analysis, I think creates the demand for people's palates to say, Hey, I want something different. And when I first got introduced to Cornelius and Anthony, uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, had them, and then when Courtney had sent me some stuff, I ran into this Senor Ashugas. And I was like, this is awesome, right? This, this stick is, uh, it, it, at least for me, this stick kind of just says, whoa, it, it, it stops me in my tracks. This is this is uh, right here. This is Senior Sugar himself. Nice, <laughs> and he's gonna and pick he's him up a little bit. A little, I just see a little nose and eyes. <laughs> there you go. Gary. Look at him. <laughs> Stand up, Oscar. Look at there that. you go. That's that, awesome. That, that's the guy right there. That's, that's the, my that's my little sidekick, the, Oscar. <laughs> and, and he's the dog that's on the Senior Sugar packaging. You know, it, the the funny thing about Senior Sugar is we. It, the product was created as a byproduct of consumer demand. You know, we had a lot of folks coming to us saying, you guys don't have a Maduro in your portfolio. And, mm. you know, we, we really hope you'll do something. And my objective was to find some good broadleaf and, you know, go to work. Well, good broadleaf is uh, it's out there. Um, 
uh, at certain points in time, but it's not easy to get your hands on. You know, the, the more people that get into this industry and the, the more that more cigars that are made, the, the, the farm community has got some work to do to catch up so that, you know, there's enough good tobacco out there to work with. Well, when I realized I really couldn't get the kind of broadleaf that I needed to make this Maduro, I, I kind of settled on a San Andreas wrapper. Uh, it worked extremely well. It gave us some spice in that blend. Um, that blend has a proprietary binder on it uh, that's grown in the United States, and it's kind of a fix-it product. I mean, it, it it fixes the good stuff and enhances the bad stuff for us. And, it, you know, we've got it on several of our products. Senior Sugars, um, Ariel has it, Mistress, and the Gent. That's how good it is. And, you know, so... That, that's kind of where it all started was that we needed a Maduro. We ended up with a San Andreas wrapper because I couldn't get any broadly. Um, and and we, we went to La Zona and started making cigars. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, has that been kind of your most popular or what's your most popular? Because usually Daddy, what I like is not the most popular. <laughs> Daddy Mac Daddy Mac is still our best seller. Mm -hmm. Um at this point in time. So, you know, I, I guess a lot of that comes from just the fact that it's been on the market longer, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it, doing shows like this and, you know, the different outreaches that we're doing with consumers, you know, that's subject, that, that's subject to change. But right now, Daddy Mac is our best seller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's like I said, I, I, I've had the Daddy Mac as well. I like it, but this one, uh, the the one I only one I have not tried from your line. I have not tried um, two of them. I have not tried the Ariel, and I have not tried the Mistress. So I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to go on a search uh, for, uh, for for those. You know. All right. Here's the heads up on the mistress. I, I the, is, the mistress, is that like a is that a unicorn? And I'm going on a mercy mission because my last interview, I was like, I can't find the cigar that you think. He goes, that's because you can only get it online. I was like, oh, <laughs> that explains that. that explains everything. You know. <laughs> no, you you should be able to find some mistress. But if you're not a fan of a super power or how strong cigar, it's gonna kick your butt, man. I, I've uh, the the objective with mistress really was I got to the point where I was tired of hearing consumers and people saying. We need a stronger cigar. We came out with Venganza, and I said, "Boy, that's a strong one. We we probably won't ever make one any stronger than that." And you know, I had people coming back saying, "This just isn't strong enough." I said, "Okay." So so we sat down with the mistress, and I made up my mind. I said, "We're gonna see what these boys can handle mm -hmm. because that that thing is packed full of Lijero and and U.S. grown Lijero too." Mm. Um, that cigar, basically, other than the the wrapper on it, it's a, it's all U.S. And it is a it is a powerhouse, and it will kick your rear end. So no kidding. Just just giving you a heads up, you know. I'm looking forward like to it because I I, I I love a viaje or a tatuaje in the morning. So I'm I'm there. You know, rock and roll, um, brother. Uh, <laughs> I want you to smoke that cigar, and I want you to come back to me and tell me how you could stand it. And believe it or not. There have been at least one other consumer that came to me and says, this cigar is not strong enough. And I just said, oh, my God, it, 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 you can't get it any stronger. I mean, it's nothing but Lajero in that cigar. Mm -hmm. And it is it is a butt whipping Lajero, too. It's not you know, it's not anything that's come off a of poor soul. It is it is top of the line, top of the stalk tobacco in that cigar. And I want you to smoke it and you let me know. Uh, how things went afterwards. I will absolutely. I'll, I'll put. I'll. I'll tag you on Facebook and and take a picture Perfect. and and, and let you know. Um, you you mentioned that you put some some U.S. components in regards to the tobacco. Uh, in there has that been? Uh, is that like you know what what's your kind of methodology? behind that other than you could probably get it right <laughs> well, that, that's part of it joe but honestly you know i'm 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 from a tobacco growing family in the united states of america and you know i've got neighbors that are tobacco growers and friends that are tobacco growers and you know i mean you, you're kind of loyal to your country and you're loyal to farmers i mean we we have uh long-term uh business relationships with the farm community all over the united states and frankly we grow the best tobacco in the world because of our, you know, our infrastructure and uh, the ability to 
to. The growing conditions, the soil, all of those things work extremely well, even for cigar tobacco. So, yeah, I'm, I, I lean toward U.S. grown if I can. I mean, obviously, there, there are certain styles and varieties of tobacco that may, may not do quite as well growing here in the United States as it does in, say, maybe Cuba or, you know, even the, the volcanic soil from Nicaragua. You know, that has a special twist to it, and we love that tobacco. I mean, you won't really find any products that we manufacture without some Nicaraguan, with the exception of the mistress. I think everything else has got some Nicaraguan, particularly on the filler side. Um, and, and really, we love the tobacco from Nicaragua, but it's it's just the, the relationships with the farm community here in the U.S. that um, you know makes it, uh, it it makes it better if we can buy some tobacco in the U.S. to make cigars with. That's awesome. You got a couple more minutes to talk 2019? Your I'm expectations. Here long, I'm not here as long as you need me, at least up for another few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go about another eight to ten minutes or so. I just no, wanted. I just no wanted. Problem. I just wanted to take some some time out and and talk about you know kind of your your takeaways on uh, industry. It can be specific to Cornelius and Anthony or or just your your take in the industry um, there for 2018 and what do you think that you're gonna uh, or that we're all gonna see in 2019 and if you don't want to answer that question because there are thousands of listeners i understand but <laughs> well i mean i can tell you in, tw- in 20 i'm in not going on record to say that right <laughs> <laughs> right in, in 2019 we'll be introducing another cigar i mean that's just you you can figure figure for us to introduce a cigar probably over the next one every year for the next 10 years i mean we're mm-hmm. just prepared to do that a lot of the artwork is already done and you know we've done a lot of planning to to create products that uh that accentuates our portfolio that that is based on consumer feedback um so we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep rolling cigars out and the, again as i told you earlier in the show the good news for us is all of these cigar blends are grandfathered so mm-hmm. you know we're, we're able to, to roll one out every year and we're going to continue to do that now whether the whole industry is, is going to take that approach or not i don't know i I've, I've noticed a lot of things that I know from my own knowledge base that there's going to be some problems because I see s- some things happening from manufacturers that the way I understand the FDA, they're not supposed to be happening. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you may you may hear about some folks getting slapped on the wrist or, or product pulled off the shelf at some point in the future because it doesn't meet the, the definition of a, a grandfather blend or has been through the, you know, the SE application process. So, you know, that's why you don't see limited stuff from us. I don't do any limited editions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, you know, there's no future in it, frankly. I mean, mm-hmm. I know why cons- I know why manufacturers are doing it. You know, it, it's a, it's the cycle of the year, basically, you know, you get to July and it's all IPCPR and, mm. you know, that's really when a ton of product is sold. You don't sell a lot of product after that. I mean, you sell some through the year to fill in here and there, but the big push is always around IPCPR, and that's where a lot of cigars get sold. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you got folks coming into the first part of the year like we're about to, and, you know, things slow down. It's really slow because the weather in the country and, you know, folks aren't smoking as many cigars. And a lot of times manufacturers say, I need to do something to fill in this dead zone of time between now and when spring comes and you'll see guys rolling out limited editions and different stuff. And that's, you know, uh, that's fine as, as long as they don't run into any issues. But, you know, for us, we're going to stick with things that we know is going to be in compliance with FDA because there's frankly, there's enough other problems being in the cigar industry than, uh, than to go ahead and shoot yourself in the foot. So, we try to avoid that if possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what was uh, super awesome for you that happened in 2018? Uh, we beat the Patriots. My team beat the Patriots. <laughs> oh, oh uh, last Sunday has made my entire year. Everything's good now, no matter what happens. That's pretty much it for me. That's it. You would. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a I'm a long term Dolphins fan, so that's going to tell you a little bit about me. I'm I'm really too stupid to find another good team, yeah, you know, yeah. to, to root for. I'm just loyal as they come, and 
Uh, I've been through the I've been through the ringer with that team since 1976. So I didn't even get to see the good years. Mm-hmm. So any any of the guys up in the Northeast that you know that have that 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 have the Patriots as their favorite team, you guys don't realize how lucky you are because. Um, you know, it, it's been since 76, however many years that's been now, I guess it's over 40 years. I've been taking a butt whipping because of my Miami Dolphins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> they have it. I was expecting a, uh, industry answer, <laughs> but you know, that's cool. That's cool. You know, uh, I'm surprised like Paul didn't run behind and unplug the server and then we go dark and. <laughs> I guess that's a wrap for Stogie Geeks for this episode. Just, just tell him I said Miami Miracle. He'll know what I, I, I'm talking I'm, about. I'm sure. He, you know, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, after last week when he did his other security shows, he, we, we do seven other security, seven other podcasts in the security industry. And you know how we talk right before we go live and everything. Right. Everybody right, right. was like, dude, what happened on Sunday? And he's just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was just like, and I was like, dude. And then, uh, you know, he had a hat on and someone was like, is that a Patriots hat? He's like, no, it's not a Patriots hat. Like, you know, <laughs> you know it's like, hey, uh, look, I, I've taken so many beatings over it. I don't, I don't mind dishing a little bit out once in a while. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it's hard being a Dolphins fan. I can tell you. Yeah, for sure. But you can't beat the weather. Right. That's I've always said that. I mean, who wants to go to a home game in December in New England? I think you'd rather be in Miami at a home game. Heck yeah, you know what I mean. But you know, it's just, it's just, yeah, it 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 gets pretty rowdy here uh, with 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 the Patriots and and they, you know, it, it's funny because even even if you cascades over to the Red Sox and 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 whatnot, like it's just expected. And it's like you know, it's like the the fans get so. Not only so into it, but like they, you know, they could be up by three, and they're like, "It's not enough." Like it's not, you know, it's like they'll be all right. Like relax, you know. But it's just enjoy kinda... it, enjoy it, because I can tell you as a sports fan that uh, you know it doesn't last forever, and you better enjoy it while it's there. Because when it's not going good, it sucks. I mean, I, I'm a long term football fan. My youngest son is a is a player in college, and. This is his first season in college, and they redshirted him. So I didn't get to see him play any this year, which really sucked. Mm-hmm. My team sucked as usual until last Sunday, though we are somehow or another still in the playoff race. But enjoy enjoy a winning sports team if they're your favorite because those are good times, and it doesn't happen every single year. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think you know what, what, what we're going to see here in, in, in 2019 from an industry perspective – I think we're going to see um, a little bit more of collaborations kind of coming to, you know. Uh, there are benefits uh, uh, to that for sure, especially when it comes to to the marketing side. If you're looking for exposure on either end, whether you're the bigger end or the, or the littler end of the collaboration and whatnot. I also think that um, the smaller cigar companies that um, really made a, a big dent you might see some consolidation uh, as well, and and then when it comes to the classic, classic stuff, um, their backs against the wall to not only s- they kind of have like uh, they they have to almost perform double duty, right? They have, they mm-hmm. have their back against the wall to keep them th- their market share and keep their you know hundred twenty three year history going, that machine going, but coming into the circle they also have to have some sort of a creativity element that again the cigar enthusiast really wants to see you know and yeah and, and, absolutely and I, I agree with what you're saying I, i'm personally am thankful that i'm not a major cigar company today because uh, it's just a the, the, things are changing so fast mm-hmm. consumer palettes are changing and the desire for variety is is a constant and you know, just those those big companies. It, it's the difference between turning a scooter around versus turning around a you know a, a a big ship. It just it's not an easy thing for them to do. There's so many layers of management, so much stuff that has to they have to go through to make decisions. Whereas, you know, fortunately for for me, I'm in a position that if I decide I want to make three new cigars next year well then that's what i'm going to go do i don't need to go ask anybody i don't need to go to the board of directors or none of that kind of stuff so the fact that we're fleet afoot now is great i think it's it works well to the way 
the industry is and the way the consumer is right now in the cigar industry. And I, like I said, I'm thankful that I don't have my back up against the wall trying to maintain market share in this type of environment because they've got a tough job in front of them, I can tell you. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I got one more question for you, and I'm going to give you a little context right before I let you go. I was at a cigar event this week, and one of the raffle prizes was a autograph-signed Perdomo drumsticks, right? Awesome, right? awesome. And... <laughs> The, I, I, I can't, I can't I'm, I'm just telling this story because it drives me crazy. And they're like, what do drumsticks, like, did, after they won it, they were like, you know, wh what's up with the drumsticks? And I'm like, dude, really? Like, 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 have you ever heard, like, him play the drums? So here's my, so, so, so here's my question to you. Outside of tobacco, what is your superpower? Like, ah. if you would have given autograph something or other, and this might be my new 2019 question, because you're the first person that we usually have, like, five questions we ask on Stoey Geeks and all that stuff. I've, I've, that was, uh, that's kind of like Paul Azadorian's thing. He, you know, it's his show, all that stuff, you know, the, the, those are so, this very well might be my 2019 question. You know, if Nick Podomo has drumsticks, right, and... Uh, you know, um, Avo Senior, God bless him, phenomenal musician. Uh, I've, if you ever uh, go on, you you know, any type of uh, audio, vi audio electronic, uh, jazz musician, like jazz chops up the ass, like awesome. God bless him, right? So, wh what is your superpower? Well, so, if you would have given an autograph something or other, what would it be? Yeah. Well, I'll start with the music part. I, unfortunately, it's, I guess I've, I've joked about it over the years. I, I've always told people when I died I was going to be a rock star in heaven. Uh, unfortunately, I can't play nothing other than, <laughs> other than the radio. I'm pretty good with the radio, but after that, I'm, I can't play nothing. I can't sing. I can't do anything, and it's unfortunate because I love music. It's, it's one of my favorite pastimes, but... Me personally, when I'm not working, I'm fishing. I love the bass fish. I love competitive bass fishing. Uh, I spend too much money in bass fishing. Um, I don't ever win much money in bass fishing. But <laughs> it just, you know, but I, it's just something that I love to do. It's a, it's a, it's a competitive sport. You know, I'm 48 now. I can't really go out and you know put on a helmet and shoulder pads or you know, really drive to the basket very well anymore, but I can stand on the front of the boat and sling the hell out of a, out of a fishing rod. And, you know, I guess I would sign, uh, I would sign a fishing rod or I could sign a, a fishing lure. Um, competitive bass fishing is, is kind of my go-to thing when I'm not s stuck doing some kind of work. So, uh, that's my little thing. You, you know, go. I love bass fish and my little sidekick here, he goes with me everywhere I go. He's on the boat with me. He's excited about every fish I catch. So it's pretty good times for me. It's a good, peaceful, clean environment. And I mean, you know, even Jesus liked fishermen. So, hey, there you go. Thing. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it on Facebook? I don't have it over. Are they? Oh, oh they're what? Uh, oh yeah, I'm the new daddy. I'm the new daddy Mac, right? That, that's a, <laughs> did, you, did, did, did Stephen hear that or no? He doesn't hear the. I comment? heard it. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't know yeah. how that all how that all technology works. I'm I'm so used to it. Like in the radio world, you 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 can just bark in my ear all you want. I'll say it. But yeah. So uh, for the Stogie Geeks listeners who didn't hear it, um, there was a comment over uh, uh, a Stogie Geeks listener who is watching this live, and he says, "Since I uh, am a father now, I'm the new Daddy Mac." There you go. My comment to you, Stephen, is. In 2019, if I start seeing fishing lures as as like a swag gift, they got to come <laughs> let me know because I will ship you a bunch of Stogie Geek stickers so you can pass them both out at once, right? Oh, that's a great idea. You know what I mean? So, you know, because cause, cause <laughs> that marketing mechanism was, was invented right here today, December 14th, right? Of absolutely, 20, absolutely. Of 2018. I can see it now. You got the drums, IPCPI. You're like going to be there in a fishing outfit, you know, with a cigar on the end of it, getting people to come to your booth, right? And then, yeah, and, and I'll, <laughs> I'll be trying. I'll be trying to sign fishing lures and end up sticking a hook in my hand that's just you know <laughs> do? it's all good it's all good that's right. well that's right well merry christmas to you sir thank you for your time uh happy new year to you best of luck 
Uh, keep in touch with us over uh, 2019. If you ever have any update or press releases, let me know. Thank, Thank you, you for Jeff. being on Merry the show. Christmas. Listeners, happy new year. Merry Christmas. Be safe.